Aloha everyone. In this video, I actually take a airplane trip over the Halima'uma'u crater to take a look for myself. Let's say, get an eyewitness perspective of what's happening up there with the crater lake that has formed. So we will be covering that adventure in this video. And in the process, I will be attempting to answer some of the questions that I have seen posted, not only on my videos, but other videos and other social media platforms as well. So if you have a question that this video don't seem to answer, you can also head over to my Facebook page and send me your question there. You can find links to that along with my Instagram, Twitter, and some other great things in the description below. With that said, let's go ahead and get this started. To begin our adventure out to the summit crater, I'd like to show you the aircraft we will be traveling in. It is a single engine 1962 Cessna. It is an older aircraft, but it has been very well maintained and it is in great condition. So I feel very confident that we will have no problems during the flight. Our pilot has over two decades of flight experience and is currently also the pilot on one of the medical aircraft, which we will take a look at at the end of this video. Now that we're all aboard, our pilot is going to prepare to taxi out to the runway and wait for clearance to depart. Now as we enter the runway, I want to point out a little interesting fact. See the number there on the runway, number 8? That actually indicates the direction that we are facing and we are going to take off from. If you add a zero to any number at the end of a runway, it indicates the degrees on the compass. And in this case, it's 80 degrees, which is 10 degrees off of east. East being 90 degrees. So we are taking off at 80 degrees in an easterly direction and on our way to the Halima'u Ma'u Summit Crater. As we approach the summit crater, I just want to make a quick mention because I had forgotten earlier that this uh, video and the photographs that I'm going to show you uh, are from August 31st, 2019, unless otherwise stated because there are some new photos from the USGS that were released on the 2nd, I believe, and we will be taking a look at those as well. As we approach the crater, we can see some of the features very easily. I'm going to zoom in here and we can see one of the sulfur uh, fumaroles uh, steaming their way with a uh, bank of sulfur built up around it. And then we swing over here and there is the green crater lake that has formed at the bottom of the crater. In the video, there are certain characteristics that pop right out to me that I noticed while I was there, but I will actually talk about those when I get to the part where I'm going to answer the questions and I will show you actually some of the still photography uh, because it is actually much better than the, uh, the video simply because when the camera was zoomed in to get a good look at the lake, as you could see, um, the image stabilization really wasn't able to handle the, the vibration of the, the aircraft. However, with the other camera, I was able to get some absolutely amazing, spectacular shots, including close-ups of this phenomena that has occurred on the summit of the Kilauea volcano. Now, real quick, I want to show you something before we get to the uh, question and answer part. Right here is a road. This is Crater Rim Drive. And during the 2000 eruption and the collapses that was occurring, part of this road actually fell into the crater, as you can see there. The first question I'm going to address is a very common question that's being asked uh, pretty much everywhere, and that is, where is the water coming from? Now, in a previous video, I uh, stated that, in my opinion, I believed uh, the most of the water was probably coming from groundwater seeping into the crater versus rainwater or any other source. However, um, after witnessing it for myself and getting some really good views, some great footage and some great photographs that I was able to take a real good look at, I noticed a couple things. The first thing I noticed was in this photograph. If you look here at this part of the pond, you see that the color is obviously different than the center, center of the pond. Um, the reason is, is because there is less what of whatever is mixed into this water in this location. Um, but it should be 
relatively you know uniformed if you look at the rest of the pond here however what i believe is this may be a influx of new water into the pond itself and it would looks like it actually may be rainwater it is because of the previous photo and this photo that i've changed my opinion as to where the water is coming from and i suspect it is mostly rainwater and ground filtered rainwater versus the water table itself. Looking at this photo, if we look here to the right side of the crater rim, we see these interesting little lines that, that start up here at the top and they're very thin, well, relatively speaking, but as they run down to the lake at the bottom, they do widen. Now, normally you would look at this and say, oh, that looks like rock slides. And that's what I was thinking in the beginning myself as well. But if we look really close, we see that these what could potentially be um, watersheds coming down the, the inside of the crater, they run right to these areas on the pond where the water is not as bright fluorescent looking green as it is in the center of the pond, indicating that water is slowly trickling in and it's keeping that area less concentrated with whatever is uh, in the water turning it green. So that is why I think it is more rainwater now versus groundwater. However, I will state this, it is definitely not seawater. There has been a couple comments asking if it could possibly be seawater. No, it is not seawater. The elevation of the bottom of the, the crater summit is 1500 plus feet above sea level. So I don't think ocean water has anything to do with this. If we keep examining this particular edge of the pond, uh, we'll call it the right side, and if we look at the top, we see that um, the same thing happening, but to a lesser degree. And if we look down at the bottom, we basically see it's happening here as well. However, we don't see it around the left edge of the pond in this photo. And I think I know why. Actually, the answer to that answers the next question. Why is the water green? Now, this again is speculation based on what I'm seeing in the photos. Why the pond is green could be for a totally different reason. But I do believe that uh, I see some potential evidence that says that because it's rainwater, that it's definitely going to be sulfur. And here's why. If we follow the edge of this pool up where we see what looks like water may have been running down from rain, it leads us right to some of the sulfur fumaroles which means rain washing past those are going to pick up sulfur and wash it right down into the crater lake this is why i think the left side is really a nice uniform milky green because the water coming down is highly saturated with sulfur versus the right side which is more just fresh rainwater picking up whatever trace elements are in the rocks and the debris there on the right so to answer the question, why is it green? Because it's a pool of sulfuric acid. When sulfur mixes with water, it creates basically sulfuric acid. And because of the brilliance of the green, I would say that a water sample is going to show that it is uh, sulfur contributing the color and that the pH will be uh, very, very low, therefore being extremely acidic. This next question is actually kind of a two-parter. And the question is, is the water boiling? And if it's not, what's causing the agitation on the surface? Well, first of all, no, the water is not boiling. The uh, water measurement from last I know was 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. However, I did hear a report that the temperature was down to 141 degrees Fahrenheit However, I have not been able to confirm that through um, the USGS or, or any other viable source at the time. So we're going to stick with 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius as the temperature of the water. So no, it is not boiling. So if it's not boiling, then what's the source of the agitation? One of the other ideas it could be was escaping gases from the rocks underneath the pool of water. However, after my observations on the 31st and a new photo released by the USGS, I now know that it is not boiling, it is not gas, it is actually ripples from wind.
yes that's what it is all the, the little sparkly stuff is basically uh, tiny waves on the surface of the pond created by the wind drafts and currents inside the crater I'd like to also give a big thumbs up to M. Patrick, the photographer who took this photo. This is an excellent capture. Finally, this last question is the one question that keeps getting asked over and over and over, but for just cause. And that question is, how big is the lake now? As of September 2nd, 2019, the USGS is estimating that the size of the pond is now around 295 feet or 90 meters running east-west and 144 to 148 feet or 44 to 45 meters running north-south. Now I'll do a quick little math for us so we can get kind of an idea of how big this is. Okay, taking 295 feet and multiplying it by the average of 146 feet for, this, uh, for the north-south dimension, we get 43,000 70 square feet of surface area. Now that it's a little bit more uniformly shaped, I'm only going to take 12% off of that surface area versus the 20 that I took originally. That leaves us with 37,901.6 square feet of surface area, which is 3,521.17 square meters or 0.87 acres in size. The last time I calculated the overall estimated surface area, it was 0.55 acres in size, which means that is a difference of 0.32 acres. That's just under a third of an acre increase in overall size of this lake. That does it for what seems to be the top questions about the phenomena that's occurring at the Kilauea Summit Crater. If you have a question about what's occurring here, head over to my Facebook page and uh, drop me a line. Let me know what, what your question is. I might talk about it in a future video. If you appreciate content like this, click that like button to let me know. And if you want to continue to get notifications on other content similar to this, then you need to make sure you are subscribed to the channel. So hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click that bell icon and select all notifications. So that way when I post new content, you'll be instantly notified of its availability. Finally, for everybody that has stuck around and watched the entire video up to this point so far, I really do appreciate it. And just for you, I have some special bonus content. It is that medical aircraft that our island uses to transport medical patients that need to be transported by airplane that I talked about in the beginning of the video. So let's go over and take a look at that. That'll do it for this video. Mahalo for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to show that like button some aloha as well. And you have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.